How are you guys today? Thank you for being here. I hope you had like an amazing uh, awards conference. So yes, my name is David Navarro, and I'm the city at Bueno, uh, New York. And yes, I'm going to talk about Bueno. I'm going to talk about myself and superheroes and supervillains. Superheroes. Who, who doesn't love superheroes? I'm sure like some of you or all of you at some point in your life or even now, like dream of being like Superman, like Batman, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, uh, you name it. And, and who wouldn't? Imagine you can have like super strength and superpowers and, and, and run super fast and, and use amazing technology to save the day and against the, the bad guys. And there's a reason why we, we love supervillains, because it's rooted in our human nature. It's that survival instinct, because we, we are wired to to feel safe and, and protected. If something like wrong happens, we want a, a, a superhero. We want a superhero to, to just like protect us from, from dying. And it's kind of like a, that human like instinct of feeling safe and protected and, and safety. And therefore, we like order and stability. And that's the superhero mindset. And I'm going to tell you one, one like personal story. This is me. Beautiful hair, right? Like for much that I love, like Christopher Reeve's Superman, he wasn't my 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 favorite uh, superhero. My favorite superhero was Massinger C. I, I was obsessed with that, with this. I think this was like a, an anime series, of course, that was extremely popular in Spain back in the days, in the late 70s, early 80s. So you can imagine how old I am. And and it was like the first like tripulated giant super robot that was kind of like the perfect superhero. And he had amazing powers, like he could fly, he could have like the tornado mouth, like the belly missile or whatever, laser eyes, like powerful chest, and my favorite thing of favorite, like the rocket punch. I had one toy that was a rocket punch, I was obsessed with that. And, and the, the structure of every episode was pretty simple. It was like Massinger C, giant robot fighting against other giant robots, trying to protect uh, humankind. And all those robots were created by this guy here, Dr. Hell, who with, uh, like he was with his army of other supervillains, and he created in all these series, like all these giant mechanical beasts that were just like there. Yes, because one thing happened is like Massing as he was there, it was the only thing that was between him and his goal of conquering the world. And he created in the series over 100 mechanical beasts. And, and, and this is that thing that makes me think. And it's like, okay, let, let's wait for a moment. I love superheroes, but this guy there, like, is always relentlessly creating, trying, failing, coming back, and repeating the process every single time. Isn't he the real, the real superhero? Because actually, you see, like, Massinger said was there. Yeah, okay, cool, I'm a giant robot. But he was the one creating robots to, with his purpose of conquering the world, and every time was like, going there and then coming back destroyed and, and, and very, very sad. But every time nothing else, he had to work harder uh, to, to be able to protect the world. And, and it's what I'm thinking about supervillains. Like supervillains are actually cool. And, and I just want to, to talk about them because they are the, the, the antagonists. They are the element that the superhero needs to make sense because if the superhero is, the supervillain is not there, superheroes are just the passive waiting. There's nothing there for them. But the supervillain is the only one that is interested in change and creativity and trying to make things happen and dare to, to, to change. And as Alfred Hitchcock said, the most successful the villain, the most successful the picture. And it's making me think the more we embrace that tension between order and chaos, the better the outcome. Because this is the reality we face all the time, the, the blank canvas. Whether it's you're writing a book or directing a movie or writing a song or in your design file, and talking about like design, perhaps your, your design file starts like that, a beautiful blank canvas with no order and no chaos, but then we activate the, the, the superhero in us because we are scared of, of, of not having order, so that we, we set up grids, and those grids transform into, into templates, and those templates into, into frameworks, and, and just to create that perfect universe of order. 
and now we have even more elements that can help to bring more order, like best practices, design trends, data, like a lot of things that make our work basically like a big like choreography of order. But I said that, that we need order and chaos, that beautiful tension to, to, to make sense, because actually, if everything is ordered, can, everything can be just boring and predictable, but if everything is chaos, can be very uncomfortable. We need that tension. But I said that we have all these tools, all these toolkits, all these things that are pretty annoying that mean that are we really just like getting chaos out of the way? Are we just like becoming comfortable and we are only want to embrace order? Does this mean that superheroes won? <laughs> Dramatic moment. So I'm coming here just to like try to onboard you in a, in a, in a journey in the dark side. Give yourself to the dark side. It is the only way you can save your friends. Okay, this is too dark, but I like it. So, every super, super villain, so whether well, they want to just like conquer the world or just have more power or just kill people, like they're evil, right? So, all of them have a, a, a mission, they have a purpose, but, but can be different. But they have one thing in common, that's what I call the supervillain mindset. And it's the way they, they embrace chaos to provoke a reaction, to provoke evolution, and to make things like different. And I want to bring always, like this guy is my favorite supervillain in the creative space, is Dan Wyden from Wyden and Kennedy, that he knows that chaos is the only friend that you have just to be creative. It's the only one that is gonna push you to the limits because order is basically, you're gonna be one of many. And, and that makes me think what we do at at Bueno. Of course, I'm not going to say that everything should be chaos. No, everything should be the balance, the perfect balance between chaos and order. And we love order. We like systems, we like processes, but we know that we need tension. Otherwise, we're going to be, as I said, one of many, and we need to bring that. So I'm going to explain you what are the, the, say, the commandments or the, or the treats of the supervillain mindset. And I'm going to do it through the story of one of our, our clients. We work with Cowboy, that's an electric uh, bike startup out of uh, Belgium, who came to, to Bueno two years ago with, like, okay, we have a bike and a name, and we need help to, to shape our brand. And yes, this was about bringing, of course, the proper order, but as well, we embrace a lot of chaos. So I'm gonna start with the first like, commandment of the supervillain, and I hope you, after this talk, you become one of them. I love drama, so I'm, I'm making every cover super dramatic. Be obsessed with purpose. So every, every supervillain has like a clear motivation. They have like the clear goal. We want to conquer the universe. It's not that they say, I want to conquer the universe. And at the same time they say, and I want to protect cats. No, they have like that mission. They want to conquer the universe. So they never like, like give up in that, in that dream. And if I'm thinking what we should do when we face a creative project, we need to start defining that why, that North Star, that mission that is going to be with us uh, for the rest of our lives, hopefully. So starting with this, is they came to win, as I said, with this like, green prototype and just a name, nothing more. And then the first part is what we do is like, let's talk about strategy. We designers, like, sometimes we forget how important a strategy is, but a strategy is that perhaps like, the, the, the only chance you have to, to find that why, and it's basically what you have to, to find, that North Star, that motivation that is going to be your, your, like basically what I said, the North Star. So with, with them, after all the discussions and trying to find that, that, that guide, that why, we landed in two, actually. And, and, and we just tried to discuss, because the first one was kind of like mission-centric, like redefine mobility with a connected bike. That could be our North Star. And they thought, okay, this perhaps is too ambitious. We are just like three guys in Belgium, and this can be pretty, like over-promising. Actually, I was in love with this one, because it feels like a, like a lifetime mission, not something that you can like tomorrow, and then a few days after, you, you hate it. And the second one 
was more like product driven, was like set people free in the city, which means like set people free from traffic, set people free from the old way of riding bikes. And then after a lot of discussion, they killed the, that mission and we embraced that one. But I had that in my back of my head. I know one day I'm gonna come back with, with something. <laughs> and actually this is me. No, no, not really. And then once we had the, the, the strategy, it was the, it's the moment to just yes, like go into the second commandment of the supervillain. And here we go. Play with, with chaos. That's actually one of my favorites. Actually, everything is my favorite because I'm, I'm one of them. So chaos, what is, that does chaos mean? So a supervillain is the agent of chaos. It's the agent of change. They just want to, to change things. They, they hate order. They, they want to, to, to play with their strength and the superpowers just to provoke that change, which means innovation. And then we have to be comfortable with that. We have to create like a space for chaos in, in our daily life. Like order is great. I say this all the time, but we need to challenge the rules. The rules are there just to be broken. It's not there to just like to follow only. And then one thing that I always say when, when I'm in, in the office, like be uncomfortable. And people are getting very uncomfortable thinking that they have to be uncomfortable, but it's something that you, you need to really embrace. And the first thing that we have to do is like, let's set up a team because we have to, now we have the strategy. We need to create the brand. And this was like the, the team, like Marco, me, and Quok. The Quok is there. He came to see me, cool. Uh, and then like, you think, okay, you have uh, a brand team to create a brand. So how many of those were like brand designers? None. Because basically one thing that I always say, like your, what? your brand is not your logo. Your brand is way more than that. Your brand is basically what comes out of the why. That of course can take the shape of a logo. This was the final logo. It was like kind of like trying to keep the minimalism of the, of the brand and the kind of that the touch of the spur that was connecting with the cowboy at the same time was connecting with the gears of the bike. All these philosophy that you put to justify your work. And then how that was translated into the digital product and the physical product. And everything was kind of like matching perfectly. You could see that, okay, the bike looks slick. The app looks kind of like perfectly matching with that, but we were playing safe. We were just playing the game of Okay, we have um, a perfect product. We have this photo shoot that looks like Apple-like. We need something, we need chaos. We need to bring something that makes us, because we are new in the industry, nobody knows us. We need to just like make the statement of the underdog. And while the competitors were taking the, the direction of, okay, let's go performance, let's make like, like beautiful photo shoots because we have a lot of money, we didn't have money. So we had to, to be creative and try to find an angle to make them, them distinct enough. And we decided to, okay, everybody's going performance, let's go playful. And we started to create a pink universe. Like, it's kind of the contrast of a really male-oriented bike is black, sleek. And then kind of the playful touch of pink that was like bringing to life everything. And then the way this was translating like touch point by touch point was pretty, pretty interesting. This is the headquarters they have in Belgium. So everything was kind of matching with this and people were getting traction with the, with the branding and how this looks in the, in, in the physical store. Like, keeping the minimalism, but you have this pink, pink, uh, pink touch that is creating that atmosphere in the playfulness of the indoor track so people could try the, the bike. And then you translate this into print, you translate this into, into digital. So by the end of that year, it was kind of successful to see from nothing to just selling the whole like, production of the bike. 1.5, 1.8 million was pretty successful in three months. They were like, great. So, well, like a moment of celebration. And you can think, Paul, this is great. You are doing things great. No, we, this is not like a fairy tale and it was a lot of like drama and, and pain. And this is the, the thing that takes me to the next point. What have I done? And is that a supervillain has the highest tolerance to, to failure. And, and they know that failure is, past, is part of the, the path to success and they need to keep trying and keep trying and come back after every defeat. And, and I want to just in a way make a, a statement here. I think with this like, moment of order that we're living in, we are kind of like avoiding like, failure and avoiding risk. And, and we have to really make this part of our processes. Like failing is an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to, to experiment and feeling that everything is gonna be okay. So you have to protect your teams uh, to, to be able to, to, to fail. And we failed a lot with Cowboy. We failed a lot. 
a lot. Uh, this was kind of like the direction we took because remember it was like setting people free and the freedom can come with like motion and trying to do some lines that was translated into graphic elements like and like wow the client was kind of like, where are we going this is completely completely wrong and then we ended up in this and we added the pink and and right now I was rehearsing this and I was preparing myself for this moment because the brand wasn't pink in the beginning. In the beginning, for a few weeks, the brand was yellow. And this is fucking ugly. <laughs> uh, how fuck is painful to see. Uh, basically, why it was yellow? Because we think, okay, we're setting people free from, from traffic, and then was an icon of traffic, and we can be the, like, the new traffic. And it was, okay, taxis in New York, yellow, black, wow, that's great, we're gonna kind of like get rid of them and just take that from, from their brand to make it our, our own. And, and, uh, fuck. and this <laughs> didn't work, and we started to, to embrace pink, and that was kind of like one of those moments of learning with failure. But we said, like, setting people free. We needed people. And how we were, like, going to showcase people in this pink universe. And we said, okay, we need to make this real. It was a, like an interesting discussion with the client. We need to make this real so people can feel that they are actually setting, like, getting free in the city. And they said, no, but... but we, we want to make a statement of fashion because it's a, it's a nice design and we want to, to show people that are like happy with the bike. Like, yes, but fashion is not the, the, the direction. And after a lot of discussions, they decided to do a fashion photo shoot. And, and I'm showing this not just because they're saying that the client doesn't know anything. No, no, it's because we're a team and we agreed and the team dies together. That's something important, important to remember. And, and this is the result of the photo shoot that if you think about it, what is the, the bike? I only see like happy people. This is setting people free that you have, like, look at that guy. You're going to ride that in the city? Like, that wasn't communicating something super confusing. And it was more like a Sara or HIM photo shoot more than a, a, a bike a photo shoot. And then we killed this after one week. So this was kind of interesting. And even failure when you're not failing is as well something important. For the second version of the website, we decided to go, OK, we have a bike that people are liking. They love it, let's go immersive. And then we did this with a lot of animation, a lot of interactivity, trying to, to tell the story of all the good things that the bike has. But, but this was converting zero. I remember that conversation with the client, we are not selling bikes. We have a, a goal of selling bikes and this is not converting. And we started to play with the call to actions and that. And at, at some point we said, okay, we have to kill this website. We invested time, but we have to go with something that converts more and we, we landed in something a bit less interactive, less immersive, but was converting, that was the final goal. And I'm making this kind of ode to failure, because you see a lot of like, pain that we went through, and, and failing sucks. Failing sucks, it's a fact. I'm not, say, I'm not gonna be a advocate of failure. I want to tolerate failure, but I don't want to fail all the time, it's, it sucks. So, but supervillain, as a good supervillain, you, you know that you are accepting failure, but you are ruled by one important thing. And is remembering that perhaps you can fail and you can have defeats, Superman. but you know your North Star, and you know that you can win. Fucking epic. Uh, Superman 2 is a really bad movie, but but it's cool. And and what does this mean? Like, think that you can believe in your mission, believe in your North Star. So you are here to conquer the universe. You are here to kill the superhero. So they have to have that extreme self-confidence. And, and this, understanding this in our context, remember why you are here. Remember why you spend time in the strategy, setting that North Star, and, and use more your guts, more than your logical salt of the brain, so people can actually follow you. And this is interesting, because you need to make people believe in your why, so they can just like adopt the brand, be joining the, the movement, and that was a moment that we said, okay, guys, setting people free. Really? We have a mission that is way more interesting. And we decided to just go back, like talk to the Dark Emperor, and redefine mobility with a connected bike. They started to feel people are liking the bike. Actually, perhaps we have something. And, and what's the best way to connect with people to make them feel that they can actually redefine mobility? And we have this. We have the app. This was the first version of the app. That was basically a digital key, uh, a speedometer, a map. So the basics, basically the world of order. So for the second version of the, of the app, 
we needed to, to kind of like take a different route, something that was more, and this is not working, cool, whatever. So something that was more like trying to make them feel part of, of the mission. And we did something simple, like start like a, a conversational UI that like making them feel that they are part of something. So every time that they open the app, they got that uh, statement that was telling them, okay, you can actually, you're changing mobility, you're getting healthy. So like simple things that they were like, how we can translate this in different moments of the experience when you're trying to, to set a, a, a new like trip or you, when you are ready to, to, to start the ride, or even just celebrating the end of the of, uh, navigation. And it was interesting to bring that triangle between the bike, the brand, and the user, the rider, that actually is a fan. So with that, we say, okay, let's bring something, a place in the app where you can take the functional, uh, explain the functional stuff, like how you are like, performing, how the, if you have a new fir firmware update, something that was kind of like trying to create a space for extra narratives, and that was a perfect place to, to start like bringing them on board with like, oh, let's make them be part of the, 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 the ambassador team and then helping with some simple actions like, okay, share the love, make people like love cowboy and then buy a bike and you can just get some extra stuff, kind of basic marketing tricks, but at the same time, giving them a voice, a voice that was kind of like, okay, remember the photo shoot. It was like fun kids doing fun things. Like if we have fans, why not giving them like the, the presence in our brand? So through content, through like social media, we started to, to make photo shoots, and this was pretty successful actually, uh, trying to bring them in, the, in that mindset of conquering mobility. But this is not enough. So if you made people believe in your why, why not making people share your why. And, and, and this is something that we did in the, in the last two months, is helping them with the, the narrative of, okay, we are in that big North Star mission that is basically redefine mobility. Let's try to, now that we want to, to keep living as a business, we're a small company, we don't have the money. And then last week they finished uh, a crowdfunding campaign where instead of just making people buy bikes, they made people to buy shares of the company. And they had a goal of having like 1.5 million and they got overfunded in 12 minutes. So it's kind of like interesting to see. So a brand that comes from nowhere has like this fan base that is kind of like secret and hidden. And after all this campaign, they sold 5 million uh, in shares, or five million, five million, equivalent to 5 million in shares. So three times over the goal. And what like 3,000 people, 3,000 people that they don't have to believe in a brand, but kind of like changing the narrative and changing more into the big mission was something pretty successful. And we're, we are in this moment right now and hopefully we can like work with them and then try to get them one step closer to that, that goal of redefining mobility. And, and the last uh, supervillain treat, supervillain commandment, and this is super important, and I want to bring my beloved Dr. Hell here again, is Reborn. Is, you know that in Every mission, you're gonna be defeated multiple times. But defeat is not an option, so you never give up. So, and, and villainy is something that is gonna be with you, and it's like always about learning, and it's always with the outcome of coming back stronger. And I want to, to just explain, I'm gonna spoil the series, sorry. Like, it's my presentation, I do whatever I want. <laughs> so, in episode 91, like, this happened. Dr. Hell died. So it was a life of trying just to, to die, killed by Massinger C, but at the same time, and how beautiful and dramatic were cartoons back in the days. Like, Massinger C was destroyed, and actually, he was my favorite superhero, but right now, I'm saying like, okay, fuck you. So, it's great to see Massinger C destroyed, and it's like, in a way, everything gets meaning, and you can actually, actually win. And, and these are my parting, my parting words, and I want to reflect a bit, and, and we, are, we are designers, developers, creatives, and, and I want to say, like, we are blessed with the, with the job that we have. So we, we end the project and start a new one. We just can, like, redefine ourselves. And, and, and it's on us if we want to just follow the path of order and then get things done. And, and cool, you're one of many. Or we can add some tension and some chaos and start making things different and, and embrace the route of innovation like a good supervillain. 
Because I always say one thing, that, that order is like oxygen. You need oxygen to live, and you need order to live. But it's chaos what makes you feel alive. And that's it. Thank you.